Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for tuning back in. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm just gonna maybe try and do this in one take because I can't be bothered to edit it. That takes forever. Who needs that editing stuff? So yeah, the question is, you know, now that I have owned both and I technically own both at the same time, what do I like better? The Humvee slash H1, we can just say it's an H1 if we want, or my Jeep uh, Wrangler, which is a 1994 uh, Wrangler YJ. So in other words, obviously it's a two door. So that's a tough one to say. Um, there's a few reasons, you know, it's a bit like comparing a, a freaking like battleship to a jet ski. Honestly, they're so different, but they have a lot of similarities at the same time. Um, you know, let's just start with, you know, which do I like off-roading better? Cause I've off-roaded both Admittedly, I've off-roaded the Humvee way more than the Jeep. I only did like a couple major trips on the Jeep before I broke it, like very badly. But, you know, for off-roading, the Humvee is uh, a bit of an exercise in futility if you live in the Midwest or anywhere like around where I live. Just the camera angle a little bit here. There, that's a little bit better. Um, because we have so much undergrowth and so much brush everywhere and trees and little trees and you know, our trails are really, truly trails. Like, they do not need to be marked because if you drive off the trail, you'd be driving into a dense forest and not see where you're going. Um, so, for that type of wheeling, I definitely like the Jeep a lot better. Um, and the other thing I like is it's much more difficult to high center the Jeep. Meaning, you know, basically, like, turtle it on a rock and be teetering either way. <laughs> um, believe it or not, that is... Really easy to do with the Humvee if you're running stock tire size, stock ride height like I was, which is still impressive. I mean, you've got tons of ground clearance, 37-inch tires, but they're long enough where you can bottom out, and you will bottom out. And, you know, using my rock sliders, which were basically indestructible, they weighed like 200 pounds a piece, I was slamming those things constantly to the point where people were like, you know, is this guy okay just having to absolutely slam them on rocks to get up obstacles? Without those rock sliders, my, my Humvee would would look like, um, I don't even know, dude. It would be it would be split in half like a pair of scissors or something. Um, so, you know, I would wheel the Jeep Wranglers on the same trails, especially the two doors, not so much the four doors. But they would just go over those obstacles and they'd be running little like 33-inch tires and just clear it like nothing, because their wheelbase is so short. They're almost like um, like a little side-by-side, -side, you know? Um, so, here's the thing. For where I live, I definitely do like wheeling the Jeep a lot more. Um, overall, is it more capable? Well, I don't know. I've only wheeled it on 31 so far. Um, it's getting 35 by 12 and a half tires now. And basically, you know... It, it should be way better. It's got a lift. I've got high clearance fenders, but it's not done. Um, I would say the capability level was I'd probably have to give it to the Humvee um, based on, you know, wheeling the Humvee with 37s, wheeling the Jeep with 31s. And that's just because those tires on that Humvee were like insane, dude. They were like little hands grabbing the rocks. I mean, they would go up just about anything. And even if you did bottom out, it was still still better from that perspective. But now that I've got some proper tires on the Jeep, I think it's going to be a whole different story. Um, we'll see. We'll see for sure. But it's it's a lot more fun being able to kind of just like go fast and not worry about hitting your body on trees and stuff and, you know, having the entire crew wait on you because you have to creep through something with like this much space on each side. Uh, that gets old very quickly and it is fun to wheel a Humvee, uh, but only in certain situations. So which one do I like driving more on the street? This, I have to give to the Humvee. Um, believe it or not, they're actually pretty spacious inside. Yes, the seat tubs where you sit is very small, and, you know, your legs are a little bit cramped, but the overall <laughs> freaking width inside is unreal. I mean, it doesn't, like, you can't even reach over and touch the passenger if you have a passenger, because they're so far away. It's ridiculous. Um, and it's just kind of a cool vibe driving around an old military vehicle. Um, driving around a Jeep is fun, but there's millions of Jeep Wranglers. You know, they don't really get that much attention. Um, it, it's not all about getting attention, but you got to admit, it is kind of fun when people come up to you, ask about your build, you know, uh, tell you stories about how they drove one in the armed forces, whatever it might be. So 
definitely would rather kind of daily the Humvee. Um, maybe not daily it, but it, let's say I put air conditioning in the Humvee, did a little better sound insulation. Um, you know, it, bar, bar none, it's, I think it's more fun to daily. Um, and it could even be more comfortable. Well, that's a stretch. But if I did some things, maybe even like a re-gear, which is kind of difficult, um, just made it not so freaking crazy loud and drafty and um, leaky and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, regardless of all those problems, I would still, you know, if I had a choice to go for a drive and one or the other, it would be the Humvee. Um, when you think about Humvees, they're just like absolute street beasts. You know, they're not even really designed that much for off-roading. And yes, I get it. They're insanely capable. Um, but, you know, the use case wasn't like rock crawling when the army or, or the military contracted AM General to build those things. It was to be a light troop carrier, you know, carry a certain amount of uh, payload and cargo, uh, transport troops behind enemy lines. Now, of course, that's they got moved to the front lines and that created a whole bunch of issues that I'm not going to get into. But um, it wasn't like to you know, drive them up a mountain and and crazy stuff like that. They basically are accompanying the rest of the convoy, you know, and helping to to move people. And because of that, you know, they're a little bit on the heavy side. Um, They're definitely on the wide side, but they are really, really fun to drive on the street, especially if it's like snowing or something like that. Um, And to my point, you know, my Jeep's going to have a uh, Spartan locker in the rear. It basically already does. Um, the Humvee's got these really cool torque sensing differentials where they will kind of work like lockers if you drag the brake, which is another reason it's so capable. Um, but they, they handle great on the street. You know, they don't make any popping sounds. They don't um, cause you to slide out in the rain or anything like that. They handle really good um, given that you've replaced the stock tires, which are absolutely terrible. All right, so just thinking here, <clears throat> which one is higher maintenance? Uh, in my experience so far... The Jeep, 100%, has been higher maintenance. And that may come as a shock. And look, it's a 27-year-old Jeep. You know, it's even older than the Humvees I I own or have owned or whatever. Um, But, dude, everything on that thing was trashed. And I think the previous owner was just kind of a... He did not treat it with respect. Let's just say that. Um, It was basically all original parts. Uh, It did have a Ford 8.8 in it. It still does. Um, But... You know, anything that he could have cut corners on, you know, kitchen fabrication, just it was it was really bad. Um, So I'm not saying all Jeeps are like that, but this one was a mess. You know, I instantly blew out the transmission. Um, The transfer case was never really right. So I had to get both of those rebuilt. Uh, All the body mounts, you know, the the oil pan gasket injectors, um, bushings, uh, suspension, you know, uh, leaf springs, um, pump stops. Uh, fuel tank. I had to replace the freaking fuel tank, believe it or not. Uh, fuel pump, sending unit. Um, or not the sending unit, but the fuel pump. Um, I mean, just yeah, sensors, you know, uh, the radio didn't work. That was because of his hack job, but it didn't work. Um, lights, just, just literally basically everything. Whereas the Humvee actually, believe it or not, wasn't that bad to get going, um, uh, when I got it from Gov Planet, which is saying a lot because it was sitting, you know, on a base or in a parking lot probably forever with no maintenance. But basically all I had to do with that over the years, a uh, year or two, I owned it. Um, I had to do a steering, uh, steering box. Uh, I had to do the start box. I had to do a lift pump at one point and then a few little gauges and, and lights and stuff here and there. And I, I think that was basically it. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else. Um, more or less that was everything major that I had to do to, uh, you know, make it roadworthy. Oh, glow plugs. I had to do glow plugs a few times. There's probably a few more things I'm forgetting. Um, so it wasn't, you know, completely dead on reliable, but it was pretty good. At least in comparison. All right. Which one do I like working on? Uh, this is easy. A hundred percent the Jeep. It is so easy to work on. Everything goes together like Legos. Um, you know, it, it's, it's so simple to work on a Jeep. And a lot of that's just because they have solid axles and Humvees are the complete opposite, in my opinion. Um, everything is tucked up into the body, which is one of their greatest strengths. But it makes them very annoying to work on. It's always small spaces. It's always weird angles, you know, special tools, it seems like. Um, and they have a lot more, um, you know, as far as their driveline goes, there's kind of more technology there. You know, you've got reduction uh, hubs or gear reducing hubs, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, like I said, everything's tucked in. Um, 
they are fully independent suspension, so that's kind of cool. Uh, depending on who you ask, you know, it doesn't allow for much flex. Um, but it's a it, it is a newer technology, I guess you could say. Um, you know, they are much more difficult to work on. Um, I've done both, <laughs> and a Jeep YJ doesn't have a whole lot more electronics that a Humvee has. Um, so you can't even really make that argument. Sure, a newer Jeep's going to have way more stuff. Um, but um, I would rather work on Jeep any day of the week, even though it seems like I'm probably working on it a lot more. Okay, which one is safer? So they're both basically equally unsafe. Um, the Humvee has no air airbags, as far as I'm concerned, no crumple zones. Uh, you know, paper thin aluminum body, very little side protection. The seats aren't even mounted and they're that good. So that thing is insanely unsafe. Uh, the Jeep, on the other hand, is probably very likely to flip over, especially in its current configuration. Um, you know, it has some crumple zones. It also has no airbags. Uh, the seats are mounted a little bit better, but still pretty sketchy, um, especially mine because it's had a little bit of rust and stuff like that on the floorboards. Um, you know, it, it, the brakes aren't the best, especially for big tires. Um, that's that's hard to say. I think with the the Humvee actually does handle pretty good. Um, and it does stop pretty good. It at least has adequate handling that probably won't flip over on the road and, and unless you have a blowout or something and adequate braking. Whereas the Jeep, not so much. Um, it handles pretty bad, uh, or at least I'm, I'm anticipating that it will. Um, and even with the 31s, the brakes were not the best. So now I've got honking huge 35s. That's probably not going to be good. Um, so I think I don't, this is a tough one, man, because if I actually got in a head on collision, I think the Jeep would be a little better off. Um, but I don't know. You know, the, you also got to look at mass. Um, if you're hitting an, a movable object, you want to be lighter because you'll have less momentum. And this is just kind of bro science, but, um, if I were to be hitting a movable object, like rear ending someone, I probably would want to be heavier because that object will, move more and have a little bit of give versus a really light jeep so that's hard to say um i had to I, i'm gonna tie them on that that that's pretty much a tie all right so you know basically the title of this video which one do i like more if i could only have one what would i take um this is tough you know for youtube 100 percent the humvee people really like the humvee um people like the jeep too but there's so much content about jeeps out there i mean they're so popular that's that's so saturated, whereas the Humvee is kind of a niche type thing, and people really enjoy the Humvee videos. Um, if I wasn't a YouTuber and it was just my personal vehicle, um, since I like overlanding and I like camping, I'm leaning towards the Jeep, but the Humvee is unreasonable and impractical in all the right ways. You know, it's it's um, it's a tough one. It's kind of like, you know. A fun motorcycle versus a really practical one. Not that the Jeep isn't fun, though, but I don't know. Um, that is really hard for me to say, honestly. I love them both a lot. It's like trying to pick your favorite child or something. Um, I, I think... Uh, I don't want people to hate me, but I think I'd probably do the Jeep, once again, if I wasn't a YouTuber. Um... Because then you factor in the cost, and it's so much lower, and the aftermarket is so much cheaper and eat more readily available. I think I'd have to choose the Jeep, but part of me wants to just say send it and do the Humvee because not many people own Humvees. You know, everyone owns Jeeps. So I don't know, man. I don't want to give a cop-out answer on this one, but after having them both, I think, I think maybe actually the Humvee, honestly. I hate being indecis indecisive, but I, I think I could make it work good enough on the off-roading if I gave it a little bit of a lift and maybe, you know, made the tires stick out a little much, so a little more, so I didn't have to worry about the body always rubbing, um, and go to places that aren't so bad for wide vehicles, maybe more like Utah or something. I don't know if it's any better, but less underbrush, undergrowth, that type of thing. And the Humvee is kind of better in a way for overlanding um, because you have so much space inside. On the other hand, it's hard to get parts if you break, so a lot of trade-offs. But I guess I barely scooched the win out to the Humvee. All right, guys, that's going to do it. I don't want to make an hour-long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
I said I wasn't going to edit this. I did. I can't help myself. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Check out my channel. New content coming. I just bought another Humvee. And I've got a sweet new channel banner, which I am very fond of. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great one. See you guys later.